Hi class, it's Bill Berry here with a little introduction to table design. If you are just starting with SQL, MySQL in this particular case for this class, but if you're starting with SQL and you need to add on a table to an existing database and you're starting to creep forward with baby steps toward designing, uh, then this is a little introduction for you to kind of help you figure out what you need to do to uh, put a table into an existing database and we're not talking about the technical stuff of how what commands you type but just the concept of how does it go how do you decide the relationship what kind of fields do you need to identify things like that so these are some of the topics we're going to cover first is let's assume there's already an existing database schema or set of tables and columns that exist you have at least one table a couple in our case and you want to extend it so what do you need to do first thing is you need to draw out a skeleton enhanced entity relationship diagram and you need to make sure that the relationships are marked so we'll draw just a skeleton I'll tell you what I mean by that but just bare bones EER put in the new table identify primary keys then think about the relationship use crow's foot notation to mark them and then make sure you have foreign keys to support those relationships Last, we'll flesh out the new tables. So we'll figure out what data types, what data lengths. We're not going to cover this in great detail here. We're going to be very broad for the moment. And then you have to figure out, or you might want to figure out, whether certain columns can be marked as not null. Right? That's a typical thing that you want to do uh, to make sure that data doesn't start creeping in here, that people don't skip stuff that you need to have filled out. So that's our goal. For this particular ex exercise, let's assume we have an employees database, an employee database, and it has two tables. They're related. There's employee and there's department. And we want to extend this idea to say uh, employees are going to need to be able to register their cars. So you could say, well, I'm just going to make a new column in the employee table and then I can just put a, a car in there. Well, fine, but what if they have two cars? Uh, well then do I do two columns? Do I do one column and I overload it with extra information with a comma? And then how am I going to look that up and I have to take it apart at the comma to look things up? No, this is a lot of work. Don't be joining together data that is dissimilar. So we don't want to put it in the employee table. We'll learn later about more about normalization. We don't want to do that. So we need to have another table that's going to help us register employee cars. Now in this example, each employee can register however many cars they have. They may have no car, one car, three cars, that's fine. They can register however many they have. But they can't share those registrations, right? It's one employee can register their cars. Uh, now, this brings up an interesting question. If you have married employees, blah, 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 but let's, let's uh, not worry about that. Let's pretend the world works this way for now. One employee registers that car. Uh, also then, for car registrations, we're interested in license plate, make, model, and color, right? We have our security uh, folks need to have this information so they can track down who owns what car and is it really their car, etc. So where do we go from here? First thing is draw a skeleton enhanced entity relationship diagram. That's a mouthful. Now, I suggest you do this on paper. You can do it in a tool, an application, but you're going to spend time fiddling with how do I do it, what do I type, what features do I use, how do I join. Yeah, it's just it's more work than it's worth because you're not turning this in at the moment. By the time we're actually turning in bigger designs, we'll use a real tool and we'll talk about that later. But for now, just use paper and just start sketching things out. Draw a box. You don't even have to list out all the fields, but list the name of the table and at least the primary and foreign keys right and then use crow's foot notation to draw out the relationship so in this case the relationship between employees and departments the way that it is set up for our particular company one employee uh, can work in a department one department can have many employees right so we know that one department can have many employees but in our model one employee cannot work for multiple departments Right, so you have to ask yourself that question both ways. Can one department have many employees? Yes. Can one employee work in many departments? No. So now we know it is a one-to-many relationship, not a many-to-many, -many, so that's important. So the way that that is implemented, remember, is that on the many side, you need to have a foreign key which points into the one side, the other table, that that table's primary key. So you'll notice that in employee we have a department ID and that department ID says what department that employee works in. Right. So that's how a one-to-many relationship works. Look at other uh, ER diagrams that are provided. You've seen some of these probably in, the, in your books that you look at. You've seen them in other exercises. Uh, and so look at those and you'll see that that's the way you implement one-to-many's. So that's great. 
Now, how do we move to the next step, which is we have car registration. It needs to come into play here. Well, let's start just for fun by fleshing it out a little bit. We know we have a license number. We know we have a make, model, and color. So we know all of those fields are going to be present. Now, uh, next thing to figure out is, is there a primary key that is natural or do we need to introduce one? Some tables will have a very natural one. If you have an employee, for instance, maybe a social security number would be a very natural primary key. Uh, and some others don't where you just have to, you know, a department ID. Well, may not have a great ID, so you just make one up. It's just an integer or something, right? Now, in the car registration, let's assume for now that license is going to be unique. Remember, primary keys have to be unique. So let's assume for the moment that the primary key can be here on license. Now you may argue, well, what if it's you have a car from out of state and that car has the same license number? Well, you know, we could add state on there too, right? And then make it a composite primary key if you want to be particular, but let's not worry about it at the moment. Let's pretend for the moment licenses are unique. They make a fine ID. We don't need anything else, right? That, that's perfectly fine. And then we don't need a composite key. That's enough. So that's the first step is to figure that out. Next step is to figure out which of the tables this is related to. So do car registrations have anything to do with departments? No. Do they have anything to do with employees? Yes. So let's just move this guy over here and assume that the relationship is going to be somewhere here. Next thing is, what is the relationship type? Is this one-to-one? -one? Well, you're not going to see many one-to-ones. Is it one-to-many? Is it many-to-many? -many? Well, we've already said uh, we understood department and employee. Let's understand car registrations. Can one employee have many car registrations? Yes, we've already said that. You can register several cars. Can one car registration pertain to more than one employee? No, not in our model. So if husband and wife both work at the same company, one of you gets to register the car. That's just our rule. Okay, so we know that this is also a one-to-many, not a many-to-many. -many. So to represent that, I'm going to just take this guy and I'm going to copy it. Again, don't worry about the tools. Uh, I'm going to rotate it so that I have this kind of thing. So one employee can have many car registrations. So we know now that this is our relationship and if we want to we can move that up, move the tables a little closer, but you understand the basic idea here. Great. Now we understand the relationship, but do we have foreign keys to support the relationship? No, we haven't figured that out. And remember we already said that on the many side of a one-to-many relationship we need to have a foreign key that helps us make that association. So the many side in this case is car registration. It has a primary key. It doesn't yet have a foreign key that supports the relationship. So guess what? We need to add that. So what does that need to be? The primary key from the other table, which happens to be employee ID, which is our foreign key. Now notice there's nicer notations, right? If you're working in a tool, you may have fancier ways to designate these things. Doesn't matter, right? This is what you need to do uh, the thinking part, right? So now we have a foreign key that represents the relationship so that we can get data between employee, employees and car registrations, which will be very important when we move to queries for multiple tables. You're going to need that relationship. So great, we now understand the relationship between the new table and the other tables. We've marked that relationship type using crow's foot notation. We've identified its primary key. We've identified foreign keys. We now have a pretty darn good idea about how it fits into the scheme of things. Great, that's perfect. Now, what's the next step? Well, next step is we need to think about the data types. We're not going to get in this deeply. There's a whole chapter on this. Let's talk about them very, very broadly. You have two basic types, numeric and text. We'll leave others out for the moment. Numeric, within numeric, you have three subtypes. Integers, which are basically whole numbers. They can be positive or negative, but they're, they're whole numbers with nothing, no decimal point and nothing after a decimal. There's floating point numbers where you can have a decimal, and these are great for mathematical computations, but do realize they are stored in an approximate fashion. It, you, you can lose a little precision, right? If, if it's off by 0 .001, oh well, right? That's just the way it is. It's an approximation. If you're not happy with that, if you're using, uh, using things, using data in a way that you cannot have imprecision, you must have 
precise things after the decimal point, then you can use the decimal notation. So for things like money, where you don't want an approximation, you want to know how many dollars and how many cents, period, then decimal is a great one to use for that. Great, so those are the three basic ones to choose from. For text, we may have seen some chars and you may have seen some var chars. Let's say for the moment we don't care. There is a distinction, we'll care later, but for now let's just consider them the same for our purposes. Next thing we have to think about is how long, because in addition to the data type we have to say how long. So first we figure out how long the data might be. We want to be, we want to really think through this because while you can expand them later, uh, once you get into the actual business of, of putting in data, you have a business application that doesn't let people put in the data that they need because you've been too stingy with your space, that's not good either. Uh, on the other hand, you don't want to be too liberal with it because if you have a million records where you've wasted one extra character you don't want to do that either. So you want to come up with a happy medium where you think based on all your understanding of the data you understand what will fit. So that's the length. Now for floating point or decimal numbers you also have to include in that length how many things go after the decimal. So for instance if you know you need a balance that's going to have up to nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars that's four and then ninety nine cents that's two after the decimal point you need a total length of six and then you need two as a sub you know a sub piece to remember uh, that two are for the after the decimal point. So that's great. So let's go now and look at our data types for our car registration. Now, interestingly, uh, now the license plate, what's the data type going to be? Well, let's just call it char for now. What's the length going to be? Well, how long can a license plate be? You can only cram on so many characters there. I'm going to say eight, but that's probably even more, right? You'd have to actually look at this, look into this a little bit more. There's no decimals. So it doesn't make sense for a char. Can this be null. Well, certainly not. So I'm going to say yes, this has to be not null. So we will want that designation. Next thing is uh, the employee ID. Well, you know, basically what we need to do is just copy the exact designation for all of that from the other table, right? You go and look at the employee table and you copy exactly. It has to be an exact match because it's a foreign key. So you don't have to think, you just have to look. And it's a foreign key, so certainly it's going to have to be not null to be useful. Uh, what's the make? Well, again, that's probably a character data type. How long can a make be? Well, there are ways uh, with characters we can we can certainly be stingy, but there's there's going to be some things where you can actually be a little more liberal with characters, as we'll find out later, that with not too much additional cost. So we might be a little bit more liberal and say, gosh, we're going to allow 30 there. And then, is that not null? Yeah, you got to put in the make of your car. All cars have a make, that's fine. Model's also a car, a char. We'll, we'll put 30 there. Yes, that's you have to enter that. Color, eh, probably not so long. Probably, you know, 10 characters or something is fine for that. And does that have to be not null? Yes, you have to put in a color. Not null, again, you want to think about, because if you're requiring that and somebody says, I can't give this thing, I, this doesn't exist for this particular entity, then you'd have a problem. But in this case, I think we're pretty clear that you have to supply all of this, right? You try to register your car, you got to go back and find out what color it is if you don't remember, right? You got to have a license plate, you got to have all this stuff, so sorry, you got to put it in. So that gives us all the data types that we're going to use for our uh, table. So that gives us a pretty darn good start. So now, how do we turn this into what we turn in, which is just basically a comment in a SQL script that says what is the result of our exploration, and this is what it might look like. So here's the final result. I've put it in a comment, so I start with slash star and end with star slash, and I just say, look, here's the license, it's the primary key, here's the data type, here's the length, and I want it to be set to be not null. Here's the employee ID, it's a foreign key, I've copied this from the other table, let's say, it's not null, and then I'm just going to make a little notation because it's important what that foreign key relates to. We're going to learn how to set that up later. You'll actually put in a constraint later to make sure that, uh, that these tables are actually linked with a constraint, and so we're going to say, hey look, that goes into the employee table and it's related to the employee ID field there. And then we just list the rest, right? Make model color, they're all var chars, or chars, again, we, we really don't care at this point. Uh, and then they are not null. 
So that is just a little quick intro in how to go from concept of adding a table to the final result that you'll turn in for class with just the list of these uh, you know, sort of attributes that are important for this table and that is sufficient for the moment. Hope that's a useful little step to you. That brings us to the end of our video. Please review that, watch it again if you want, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.